Thank you. Yes, thank you for having me. And so I wanted to be able to share a little bit about what's been happening in Slovakia. So I think we'll have some pictures coming up soon. Um, but I am Regina. I did grow up here. Uh, we do miss my grandmother. Um, but yeah, I serve with Crew, also known as Campus Crusade for Christ in Slovakia. And so my team, I lead the team in Košice, and um, we focus on evangelism and discipleship of high school and university students because we want that everyone knows someone who truly follows Jesus. And so we'll get to some of the stats as we wait on the pictures. Um, but in Slovakia, it's not a given that everyone knows someone who follows Jesus as there's five and a half million people, but only 1.2% are born again believers. And so oftentimes we're sharing with people who may even identify themselves as Christian, but then we ask, can you know God personally? And they're like, oh no. And there's this disconnect on what they think it means. And so we try to just help fill in the gaps and point them to the Bible. You know, what does it mean to follow Jesus and to know him personally and to know God through him and things like that. So Slovakia is in Central Europe, and um, so we are surrounded by several other countries. It is a very small country, um, but it is long and skinny like the state of Tennessee. So it actually takes me longer to get to the capital than to get to three other countries. And so as you see these coming up, um, this is our current group of students. We had to relaunch after being shut down for two years because of COVID. Um, Slovakia was very strict on their COVID rules and their healthcare system is not as adequate in helping with that. And so we were not able to meet in person and even university students only went back to school in person this semester. And so the students we did know had already graduated and moved away and we are restarting. And this is the group that we have with us now. Um, so yes, here's a map. You can see Slovakia is a small yellow country here in the middle. Uh, and then the next one is a little closer in on just our country. And so I lead the team in Košice. It's the second largest city and it's on the far east. You can see on the right side of the picture there. So on our team right now is myself, a Slovak woman who came to Christ to the ministry in the 2000s and a student Slovak intern, his name is Philip. This is looking at our downtown. Uh, it is beautiful architecture built in you know, the 13 and 1400s, so much history there. But as I mentioned, only 1.2% are born again believers. Um, there's a lot of history there as well as they were under communist rule. And I believe that's what removed some of the knowledge of relationship with Jesus and access to Bibles um, during that 40 year period where people don't really know what that means. All right, so, and the way to reach our vision is that we wanna win people to Christ. So we definitely approach people with random evangelism in the park, we do camps or we do surveys, but being able to present or just even explore a conversation with someone finding out where are they? What do they believe? Uh, of course, if they are a believer or trust Christ with us, we want to then build them up in their faith. And so that's the next slide. Um, and this is a picture of just students even in our multipliers group. As we teach and equip them, how do they talk about their faith? Now they've trusted Christ and they're probably a first generation believer. So now how do you tell mom and dad and brother and sister what's happened in your life? Um, and for sure also that your classmates and your friends. And then we also send them as missionaries, as God has called us all to tell others about the good news of him. And so this on the right is Philip, um, that student intern that we have right now. Um, and he's sharing the gospel with these two guys that we met in the park. Um, but in this summer, we do speak out and speak out loud. They're our largest and most successful outreaches that we do. Um, we have American teams come and join us and campers come because they wanna practice their English with native speakers. They know that Slovakia is a very small country and they need English to have a better job because it's just such a global world these days. And so they actually walk into Christian community without even knowing it. We live together at a hotel 
And so we get to just live life with them. They get to see we're normal, trustworthy people, but we actually live out what we believe. And of course, then they get to hear the gospel through that. Then we um, have Speak Out Loud, and it's a believer's camp right after Speak Out um, where we teach basics of faith because we saw people were trusting Christ at camp, and then we wouldn't see them for two months as they traveled you know, to see grandmother and vacation and everything else, and so we, they needed to know some basics of faith. So these are some stats um, from this last summer that we, again, were able to have camp for the first time after two years, that we had 17 campers, and with them, we shared the gospel 62 times. So that was through a variety of ways, through sharing testimonies, through drawing diagrams, through looking through a booklet. Um, but they were able to absorb different pieces of truth through that. Of course, with lots of fun and good conversations. But through that, four trusted Christ this summer. Um, two were already believers, but then eight of them returned to speak out loud. So those others that didn't trust yet were truly seeking, like, who is this Jesus and can I know more about him? So we invited them as well. And so at Speak Out Loud, we continued those conversations for the ones that were searching and then also started discipleship for those who were new believers. And like I said, with that, we teach, hey, it's just normal to have spiritual conversations with people. This is your life. So we actually went to the city we were in to practice where they could watch us do this as we went in pairs. So we initiated 58 conversations. Out of that, 16 of them turned spiritual, you know, just exploring where people are at and what they're open to. And from that, three conversations were able to share the gospel with those people. And so it's just helping our students also see it's a process. We don't know where everyone is on their journey. Not everyone is open but taking the opportunity to find out and to share with those that are needed. Um, this is our student center. So during the school year, we still have events. It's an apartment that we rent downtown where we can gather, students can come, we have parties, we have Bible studies, and they can invite their friends to be exposed to Christian community as well. And so that's what we do there. Uh, if you noticed on the map, Slovakia does border Ukraine. And so we had hundreds of thousands of refugees come and enter our country. Um, and Košice is one of the largest cities then once you cross the border. It's about an hour and a half away. So when it first happened, our team just, just got in my car and we just drove to the border to see what was needed and how we could help um, and meeting lots of conversations with that. We were able to transition our student center to a place where people could come and stay. So we hosted about 35 people who were in transition to somewhere else. But then also this family we adopted in about April. Um, they came, their baby was born, well it's two sisters and their kids. Um, the little baby was born the week before the war started. So we've seen her grow um, over this last year as well. They are definitely wanting to go back home. They're homesick, they miss their husbands. Um, but yeah, as we all know the news, it hasn't been great there. And so we were thankful that our team could just pivot to help in this need as it arose. Um, but now things, I would say for the most part, are more back to normal. Most Ukrainians have gone back home. And so we have focused back on student ministry as we do, but even while this family still lives full time in our student center at the moment, um, we share this space with them. Um, but we're thankful that we could be God's hands and feet to people who need it, who were scared in that time, didn't know where they were going, didn't even speak the language. This family doesn't speak English and doesn't speak Slovak, um, but actually speaks Russian, so not even Ukrainian. So Google Translate wasn't even helping in the beginning until we realized what language they were actually speaking. Um, so, yeah, and so while I'm back in the States, uh, I'm meeting with people to invite them uh, to join us and our team um, prayerfully and financially. And so my goal is to raise $800 monthly for our team. Um, for crew, there's no central funds. And so each missionary and each team raises their own funds for that. And so um, the Lord has been gracious in providing 400 monthly already to reach this goal. And I'm still looking for that other 400. And so I want to invite you to consider joining that. Uh, and then if you can also join us in prayer, we need more laborers for Slovak and American staff to join us. Because like I said, a team of three people um, 
we have a lot of work ahead of us in a city of 125,000 and or even a country of five and a half billion um, or million sorry um, so thank you so much for um, your prayer and your support and the ministry that we have and I also have a sign up sheet if you want to sign up to get monthly prayer letters to know what is happening uh, in Slovakia so that you can be up to date with stories and what God is doing so thank you very much Hey, before we transition this morning, what we here at Highland Park, we believe in the power of prayer. Amen? Yeah. And Regina, you made a specific appeal that we would pray that lar laborers would be sent in a war-torn country. Uh, just, like our, just like our people here in the States, they're looking for hope. And perhaps in a, in a way that is more uh, in their face and concrete than we could imagine looking for hope, the hope of the gospel, truly. Amen. Would you join me in a word of prayer as we pray for Regina? And then again, at the conclusion of our service today, we will receive a separate love offering for anyone who feels led to sow into her ministry. And so we would urge you uh, to, to follow in obedience to the Holy Spirit's direction there. But would you pray with me for Regina before we transition? Jesus, we come to you now. Thank you so much for the work that you are doing through Regina, her faithfulness. To answer your call there, God, uh, as, the, as the ministry is so often, Lord, we have our ideas about what it would be, and then life circumstances change so dramatically. But, Lord, in all of it, we recognize your sovereignty. Even this family that you have sent for them to minister to during this time, Lord, and we, we praise you uh, for uh, your direction. God, we, we do ask, just as Regina has asked, Lord, as you commanded us that we would pray that you would send laborers into that field to help to reach that community. Lord, we praise you for how these students are answering that call. Lord, ask that more students would trust in you and get plugged in uh, to let their lives be uh, a, a difference for you in, that, in their communities and their families. Lord, we ask your every blessing on Regina as, as she's come here now and as she goes back uh, to her mission field. And we ask it in Christ's name. Amen. <laughs> 